Hi again then guys and welcome to episode 8 of High Rollers, the review series for the most expensive classic cars that are featured, of course, on Gran Turismo 6. And this is possibly one of the most anticipated episodes of this series and is actually the fastest car in this series around a track. It is, of course, the massively respected and pretty popular 1970 Can-Am Racing Chaparral 2J, which is well known, of course, for its quirky and not as unique as you might think ground effect fan system. Now, this is one of my personal favourite cars of all time, both in real life and on the game. It's one of my personal favourite racing cars of all time, if not my favourite. And I just think that this vehicle, in terms of what it did, in terms of its age and its track potential, is arguably the most advanced racing car of all time. Now, I'm sure you could argue against that, and there are other notable cars, but for me, none of them come near just how revolutionary this car was for its time, and how unstoppably fast it was, to the point where, although it won its first season of racing, it only had one season of racing because it was banned due to how fast it was and due to some pretty pathetic complaints from the other teams to do with the fan system shooting stones into their cars. Get over it guys, you're racing drivers, seriously. But that's the way racing goes sometimes. Pathetic opposition results in brilliant cars being banned. Which is annoying and some people say it's good in the interest of fairness. Personally, I think that's a cop-out. There was nothing to stop any of the, of the teams from using the same technology. Uh, they chose not to, and I think that's very, very dumb. But that's the way it happened, and we can't change that. Now, for those who are unfamiliar with how exactly the fan system works, or for those of you who perhaps didn't even realise that this car had a fan system, basically the way it works is at the back of the car you have these two large fans and underneath the bodywork at the rear of the car you have your engine to drive obviously the road wheels so it's rear wheel drive and it's powered by a 7.6 litre v8 which when you tune it is turbocharged but is naturally aspirated under stock circumstances stock of course being a relative term now fully tuned it puts out 1040 horsepower and 790 pound-feet of torque. But on top of that engine is a small 125cc snowmobile engine, which you can actually see the exhaust sticking out for just at the top there, at the back, and that engine serves only one purpose, to drive a suction fan, which is located underneath the car, which literally acts like a vacuum cleaner. It sucks the car to the floor. Now that's combined with some see-through skirting that hangs down around the sides, front and rear of the car, made of something called Lexan, which is also what the rear wing is made of, which is a plastic see-through type substance, which basically creates a suction seal between the car and the ground. Obviously it's not airtight, because the car wouldn't move if it was, because it would be scraping along the floor. But it's a, about as close as airtight or about as close to being airtight as you could reasonably get. And the result of this is that you have more downforce than a, a spoiler could ever produce, and more importantly, you have maximum downforce at any speed. So whereas normal racing cars have to be going quickly in order to get downforce, which is why so many of them handle badly, at low speeds and will spin a lot because the airflow isn't high enough. With this car, the downforce is irrelevant to the speed. You produce the full downforce at all times, which means there's no wheel spin off the line. It pretty much never wheel spins, no matter what you do, unless you actually pull the handbrake. And the result in that is maximum downforce all the time, which gives you phenomenal grip, especially for a car of its age. And back in the day, it was unstoppable. It won, I believe, every race in the Can-Am series. And it was over a second faster than all of its rivals on every lap. And in the Can-Am series, that's a big thing, because they are some of the most powerful and fastest racing cars ever made. So to be a second faster than all of its competition, when it was far from being the most powerful car on the board, 
that's pretty impressive. Now, it was banned, as I said, and although the technology was used later on in a different car, the Brabham BT46B Formula 1 car, which won its first race by 30 seconds using the same technology driven by uh, Nicky Lauda and was also banned, this car is, of course, the only fan car, or the only real fan car, featured on Gran Turismo. The Red Bulls also use the same technology, which is why they have such good handling, or one of the reasons and arguably the predominant reason. But getting back to this car, what does it have to offer? Because obviously it has an amazing piece of technology, but it's still a very old car. So how fast is it compared to real rivals, both old and new? Well, for classics, it's pretty simple. There is no competition for this car. I don't care what classic car you're driving on Gran Turismo. Unless it's got 2J written on it, you don't stand a chance. It's just unstoppable. If a Can-Am car couldn't beat this, and a Jaguar XJ13 or Ford GT40 doesn't stand a chance. Now in its fully tuned form it puts out, as we said, 1,040 horsepower, and the whole car only weighs 821 kilos. Subsequently it has a massive power to weight ratio of 1,267 horsepower per tonne. And despite only having a three-speed automatic gearbox to work with, it's still an incredibly quick machine. Now, one of the downsides, or potential downsides, to a Chaparral is you have to decide, really, whether you want acceleration or top speed. You can't really have both, because you've only got three gears to work with. Now, if you tune it for acceleration, it's incredibly quick, especially mid-range. If you tune it for top speed, this Classic, despite not having NOS, can do over 290 under its own power, over 340 miles per hour with draft, and can even do over 300 miles per hour in reverse. So it's a crazy car, and at 4.5 million, although expensive, it's phenomenal value. And I feel like most of you guys have probably owned this car at some point, but if you haven't, you should definitely give it a try. So. That's about all there is to say about this car. It's the best classic in the game in terms of performance, and one of the most oddball. So that's it for this episode, and as always, thanks for watching.